Good morning. Welcome to church. We're going to sing some songs. Would you stand with me this morning? As we sing, we believe prison walls fall down. And as we sing, we believe that the lost are found. And as we sing, we believe the slow trains are shattering. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Let's try that again. As we sing, we believe prison walls fall down. And as we sing, we believe that the lost are found. And as we sing, we believe that strongholds and chains are shattering. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. The battle is the Lord's, and we are His army. There's power in His name that scatters the enemy. And if He goes before, then we have the victory. Sing the name of Jesus. The mighty name of Jesus. As we sing, we believe prison walls fall down. As we sing, we believe that the lost are found. And as we sing, we believe that strongholds and chains are shattering. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Oh, can you feel it now? The ground shake below you. And in the midnight hour, he comes to our rescue. The liberating God is faithful to bring through. Sing the name of Jesus. The mighty name of Jesus. As we sing, we believe prison walls fall down. And as we sing, we believe that the lost are found. And as we sing, we believe that strongholds and chains are shattering. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Just the mention of his name, and it shakes the earth's foundations. Just the mention of his name, and the depths of hell start quaking. Just the mention of his name, and every chain is breaking. There is power in the name. And as we sing, we believe hell has lost its power. As we sing, we believe revival is breaking out. And as we sing, we believe that this is a great awakening. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated this morning. Praise the name of Jesus. God is good, isn't he? Hallelujah. Well, on behalf of the entire congregation of Elam, I want to extend a warm and heartfelt welcome to each and every one of you gathered here today. Whether you're familiar with uh, your, this is a first time for you or you're just visiting, uh, we just welcome you and thank you for joining in worship with us. Now, I can assure you today, friends, that you are among friends. Amen. If, if you could do something for me, turn to the neighbor towards you and behind you and beside you. Give them a great big smile and tell them how happy you are to see them this morning. Hallelujah. Happy to see you guys. And for those online, we are happy to see you as well. <laughs> how, many, how many people know that church is more than just a physical building? I think so. Amen. 
It's a community of believers who come together to worship, to learn, to grow, and to support one another. I, I love Romans chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. He says, For as I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. That is, that we may mutually encourage by each other's faith, both yours and mine. Oh, that's a good verse. The Apostle Paul begins this letter reminding the people how excited he is to hear that they're doing everything that they can to do church. Amen. That's what you guys are doing this morning. Doing everything you can to gather to keep the faith. Are you ready to receive from the Lord that spiritual gift you need to be strengthened? Uh, you're not alone this morning. I, I want to remind you that you are surrounded by people who trust and believe in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And so to our visitors, both here and online, we want you to know you're not alone in your spiritual journey. Whether you're seeking answers or seeking solace or seeking a sense of belonging, we hope you will find it here with us today. And as you spend time with us today, we hope you will experience the warmth and hospitality that defines this community. So please feel free to approach anybody and just ask them, hey, what are we doing next? What's going on? What's going on this week? Can I take you out for lunch? You can take me out for lunch, amen? <laughs> come on, come on. Anyways, we just want to make you feel at home here that Elam can be your home. So fill out that Connect card if you're a visitor this morning. Place it in the offering bucket or uh, dish at the back of the church on your way out following the service. And once again, we pray that your time here will be a source of inspiration, encouragement, and spiritual growth. May you find a peace and a joy and a renewed sense of purpose in the presence of God. Let me pray this morning. Heavenly Father, you are holy, you are mighty, and today we turn to you. We give you this space, we give you this moment, this time. We give you our, our attention, Father God. Help us as we look to you, to honor you, to respond to you as we lift up the name of Jesus for the world to see. We give you the praise and the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is good, isn't he, friends? We're going to sing a few songs this morning. Oh, God, you are my God. You can stand. And I will ever praise you. Oh, God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, oh God, you are my God, and I praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you lead me. I will follow you all of my days. I will follow you all of my days. Oh, I will follow you all of my days. And step by step you lead me. And I will follow you all of my days. Lord, we lift up your name with our hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord, my God. Oh, 
Hosanna in the highest. We lift your name, Lord. Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up your name. With our hearts full of praise. With our hearts full of praise. We exalt you, O Lord, my God. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom, I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows burn like a fire oh I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul encamped in my depression I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Shout Jesus, oh Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streams, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, and Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus, oh Jesus from streams. Jesus over darkness over every enemy. And Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus, your name is power. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Oh, I just want to speak the name of Jesus, and over every heart and every mind, because I know there is peace within the presence I speak Jesus oh we speak Jesus this morning hallelujah Jesus you are a good good father there's no one else like you God praise your name thank you Jesus hallelujah 
where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Lift your eyes to heaven, there is freedom. Lift your eyes to heaven, there is freedom. Freedom reigns in this place. Freedom reigns in this place. Showers of mercy and grace falling on every face. There is freedom. Oh, if you're tired and thirsty. There is freedom And if you're tired and thirsty There is freedom Won't you give your all to Jesus Give your all to Jesus There is freedom Give your all to Jesus, there is freedom. Freedom reigns, freedom reigns in this place. Oh, showers of mercy and grace, falling on every face. Freedom, freedom reigns in this place. Freedom reigns in this place. Showers of mercy, showers of mercy and grace, and we're falling on every face. There is freedom, Jesus reigns in this place Jesus reigns in this place showers of mercy and grace falling on every face there is freedom there is freedom
song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to the Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Love, love. Singing, I love you, Lord. 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 I love you. Just worship the Lord this morning. Just tell him how much you love him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, it's so good to be in your presence again. We just sense your nearness in this place, Lord. It's just so good to sing those songs, really, as tools, instruments that bring us into your presence. And I pray, Lord, as we have gathered together today and uh, our hearts are open and receptive and responsive to you, that you would speak into our hearts, that you would challenge us, that we would truly experience you in a special way today. Minister our hearts and our souls today. As we're in your presence, we take time to remember Gladie, who's in the hospital. Lord, we pray for her. Pray that you'd minister just a healing touch to her body as she is there. Just pray, just, we just love Gladie. We appreciate her and her life. Her example, her testimony, continue to minister to her. We, we think of Kathy, Lord Jesus who uh, packed her truck on Thursday, headed out on Saturday, and is probably heading out from Thunder Bay today. We pray that you would minister to her, be with her, give them journey mercies. We thank you for her and her ministry. Just to continue to bless her and be with her, we pray. Continue to minister to our hearts today in a special way, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated. Well, good morning. Great to see you here at Elam here this Sunday morning. Great to gather together. Isn't it good to worship? Amen. Great to just sense the presence of the Lord. I can say it's wonderful for me to sit and enjoy worship. Just love it. Love it so much. Just a few announcements I want to share with you. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about kids and youth in the kitchen. Um, Looking, we're looking to start up, of course, Kids and Youth in the Kitchen in the fall. And uh, we'll be talking about this a little bit this, throughout the summer. Looking for volunteers. If you were involved in the past and you're planning to return, please let us know. Contact the office or talk to Eva, who is our new director. And uh, we just appreciate all of you that are able to help us out with this. If you haven't been involved and would like to be involved, I, I'd encourage you to contact the office. You'll need to be, of course, plan to protect, approved to ensure the safety of your kids. A little bit of a process, but we'd love to have you involved if you haven't been involved before. Registration is opening. The number of kids and youth we register, of course, is contingent on the volunteers that we have. There's lots of different jobs. As we think about kids in the kitchen, um, kitchen crew, registration, um, someone at the door, someone clean up, set up. Uh, kitchen crew. Uh, we actually, behind the scenes, we're looking for some people that could do some sewing jobs, working directly with the kids, and so on. And so if you'd like to be involved in any way with our kids in the kitchen, whether directly with the kids or behind the scenes, contact us. We need to work together, amen, to be able to do this ministry. We thought, I want to thank you as we talk about giving just for a minute. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving you'll see in our bulletin, we do have our budget there. We're about halfway, halfway there towards our, reaching our budget. 
And if you'd like to give this morning, you can give via, of course, the offering plate on the way out. Uh, some of you, many of you are involved in e-transfers uh, online throughout the week. If you want information on that and how you can be involved in e-transferring, you can uh, contact the office and we can give you some information uh, on that. We remind you that this, as you give, you give as an act of worship as unto the Lord. And, uh, and God honors you as you're faithful to him in the giving of your tithes and offerings. And we just appreciate you and your faithfulness in giving. Do you want to mention the library? All right, Kathy? That we have an amazing library. Just so, there's just resources. There. There's books. Every type of topic that you'd ever want. If you're, if you're looking, you've been on holidays or you're going on holidays and you're looking for a resource just to to lay on the beach, to read, to enjoy, why don't you visit our library? Kathy can give you some direction and uh, just use the library that we have there. I do want to mention that um, we do have a new interim secretary. Becky, why don't you stand? Becky, of course, is, is yeah, welcome, Becky. <laughs> Married to Pastor Clinton here. And, and Becky will be our new interim secretary. So if you call the church, that is the person that will be answering the phone. Thank you for being willing to serve in that capacity, Becky. I do also want to mention, as you probably were reading your bulletin before the service and throughout the week, I want you to notice that we added something else to our bulletin that we'd like to implement, um, you know, gradually. Before COVID, we used to have this thing called pre-service prayer. And people that came a little bit earlier would go to the conference room and pray from 10 to 10.30 or 10 to 10.15. We do want to make that available uh, for you that would come early, you want to pray. How many know everything depends on prayer, amen? God works in response to prayer. I'm so excited to be able to say that we run prayer meetings. We've been running prayer meetings on Wednesday afternoon from 2 to 3, and we've been averaging about 10 people in the middle of the summer. So God is good, and God is faithful, and you are faithful as you pray God moves. And we are believing for great things for our lives, for this church, and reaching this community. But everything rises and falls on prayer. We need to be people of prayer. So I just want to make you aware of that. I'm going to invite you to stand one more time, and we'll dismiss the children. The children, of course, we have toddlers church from ages two to four. And we have Super Church for children ages 5 to 10 or 11 or whatever. You can make your way downstairs. God bless you. Go. And Pastor Clinton will lead us in the song as you make your way downstairs. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands, Yeshua, ah, 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 Yeshua, ah, ah, the power yours is the glory forever amen oh yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever yeshua 
this morning. Now I encourage you to take your Bibles and also if you have obviously received a bulletin you have the scriptures that we'll be walking through this morning in the time that we have and also scriptures will be up on the on the PowerPoint as we walk through our message today. I was thinking I was going to entitle my message today Life Lessons um, because what I share with you today are lessons that we all need to learn. And like I would say any lesson learned, we can either learn a lesson easy, the easy way or what? Or we can lose it the hard way. We can lose it the, learn it the easy way or the hard way. I would hope that by listening to this message and practicing what we're t- talking about today, that we would learn some of these lessons the easy way. I've discovered from pastoring that many people either have not learned these important lessons or they've learned them the hard way. And so you say, Pastor, what lessons are you talking about today? Well, follow me today as we walk through these scripture verses and we walk through some things that I think are vital for our life in our Christian faith, in our walk. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever noticed that some people change and not always for the good when they experience a little bit of success? Anybody notice that? People change not always for the good when they experience a little bit of success, they get a little extra money that they didn't have. They get a promotion. Maybe um, when they've reached their goals, they, they begin to change. And you say, Pastor, how do they change? Well, many different ways. Uh, sometimes I've discovered when people uh, experience some success, some money, a position, sometimes they get a little bit arrogant proud. Um, I've discovered in dealing with people that when people sometimes reach a place of success, maybe they don't need you as much as they used to need you. And definitely I've discovered from observing that when people experience a little bit of success in life, they, for some reason, don't have any need for God. No need for God. Maybe as they've walked through the challenging times, they've leaned into God, but now that things are pretty good, they, well, they don't really need time, they don't really have time for God. You know, folks, it's really easy to lift our foot off the gas pedal spiritually when things begin to go well in our life. I mean, as I mentioned, in tough times, we, we, we press into God. God, get me out of this mess. But in those good times, when things are just clicking along, it's easy to relax, just to let down our guard, to kind of coast along spiritually. Maybe we, we pray less, we, we read our Bibles less, we maybe come to church a little bit less. And so why am I telling you this, folks? Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because good times can sometimes be a little bit dangerous. They can be a little bit dangerous. This happened to David in the Bible. I'm going to talk a little bit about David today. There are two big stories that we think about when we think about King David in the Bible. One is his big success, and his big success, of course, was David and Goliath. We all know that story. What's what's his 
one of his biggest failures, one of the biggest failure stories, of course, is David and Bathsheba. We know these two big stories. But the reality, the reality is that the, the Goliath story, that success story, was not a one-off for David. David was at his spiritual best when he faced times of adversity. He actually was at his best. You think about his life as he dealt with some of the struggles that he dealt with, even as a teenager. He's out watching sheep, and when the prophet Samuel comes a knocking at, the, at his dad's door, his dad's name was Jesse, and says, God sent me to select one of your sons as the future king of Israel. And so Jesse has eight sons. He parades seven out of the eight sons before the prophet Samuel. I was thinking as, as Samuel walked by each of, the one of them, he, each one of them, he's thinking, wow, this guy looks good, looks great. And you know those game shows that go buzz. Well, every time he walked up to seven of those sons, he would hear buzz. That's what he'd hear. He says to Jesse, do you not have any more sons? Yeah, but one is out, is out babysitting the sheep, but basically he's not really king material. He's out playing with a slingshot, playing with his guitar. Don't miss, don't miss this, folks. Of the eight sons, David was the one that was voted the least likely to succeed by his own father. You can hear the pain of that rejection years later when David, with his guitar, he was writing a song. He says this. Listen to what he says. Listen to his heart. He says, though my, my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. And so you hear the pain, but you... You can see how he's able to manage even parental rejection. So what about some of the big injustices that David dealt with in his life? I mean, David was anointed by the prophet Samuel to be the future king of Israel. The problem was King Saul said, it's not going to happen. Not under my watch. And he hunted David down for four years. David is the rightful future king of Israel, and yet he's exiled out of, outside the borders of Israel, running as a fugitive for four years. I found this. He said this to Saul one time in response to all that Saul was doing. He said, he said, against whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom are you pursuing? You were just as one who hunts, a, some translations say, a partridge or a dead dog or a flea. You're out hunting to kill me. You're out to get me. But this was the very time in David's life when he wrote a lot of those wonderful psalms that you and I get encouraged by when we're giving, you know, going through a tough time. Listen to what David says in the midst of this. He said, God, you are my strength. You are my fortress. You are my deliverer. It's in you that I trust. So David knew how to overcome challenges. Parental rejection, bullying in the workplace. He knew how to overcome even a long injustice in his life because he always leaned into the Lord, put his trust and his faith in God. And Dave, then David experienced um, predictable opposition in his life. When David became king, attacks were, very, were the norm for him. The Philistines, as you read in the Old Testament, in the springtime, when the mosquito bites came out, so did the Amalekites and the, Amal the Ammonites and the Moabites. And David would say, in response to dealing with his enemies, he would say things like this. He'd say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men come against me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. Here's the thing, folks. David knew how to overcome opposition. Victory over his, his enemies was routine for David. Success over them was pretty well taking for granted. David found success over his enemies so predictable. He handled adversity very well. 
But then we read this in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse, verse 1. Listen to what it says and the meaning behind it. In the spring of the year, when kings normally go out to war, David sent Joab and the Israelite army to fight the Ammonites. However, however, that's key. Uh, however, here's the key. David stayed behind in Jerusalem. I mean, why show up for work when you're the boss, right? David is in the sweet spot of success. He's just coasting along in life. If you know the background, David is not only experiencing victory over his enemies, Israel and Judah are united as one nation, and he is the king. Other goals for his life was realized the nation was united. The sacred ark of the covenant had been brought back from enemy territory and now was within the border of united, united, unified Israel. He established Jerusalem as the capital city of the united country. He has a palace. He has wives, too many. He has kids. David has arrived at the pinnacle of success. He's arrived. So here's a question for you. When did David trigger the biggest failure of his life? When did David initiate an adulterous relationship with another man's wife? When did David arrange the killing of that innocent husband so he wouldn't discover that his wife was carrying David's baby? When did David's, David engineer a cover-up of his adultery and his murder? When did David begin to think, hey, here it is, I'm the king of the castle and you're the dirty rascal? When did that happen? Don't miss this, folks. The biggest failures of David's entire life took place not in times of trouble. Follow that. The biggest failures in David's life took place in times of success, when things were good. If you ask David to look over his life and you said, David... When was the worst, what was the worst time of your life? He would say, this is it. Right now. Right now. This is the time of success where I became really less as a person. He writes about it years later in Psalm chapter 38. Listen to him. The anguish in his heart as he experienced the failure, the sin that he had been involved with. He says, your arrows have pierced me and your hand has come down on me. Because of your wrath, there is no health in my body. There is no soundness in my bones because of my sin. My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds fester and are, and are loathsome, loathsome because of my sinful folly. I am bowed down and brought very low all day long. I go about mourning. My back is filled with searing, searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am feeble and utterly crushed. I groan in the anguish of my heart. Folks, as you track this story with David, during this time, out of God's mercy, God sends his prophet Nathan to David to tell David a story. You know what the, do you know what the story was about? The story was about, it's about the abuse of power. It's like Nathan, sent by God, tells David a story. It's like he's holding up a mirror to David's face. He's saying, here's the story, now look at you. Look at you. See yourself the way you are. Listen to the story. See if you can see how David is holding up a mirror to David. Watch it here. The Lord sent Nathan to David when he came to him. He said, listen, to here's the story. There were two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb he had bought. He raised it, and it grew up with him and his family. It shared his food, drank from his cup, and even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler came to the rich man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the little ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this must 
die, he must pay for that lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, you are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, I anointed you king over Israel and delivered you from the hand of Saul. Did you notice how angry David gets when he hears that a rich man took advantage of a poor man? You notice how angry he gets. Why is David's reaction so far off the charts in reaction? I would say, have you ever noticed how what bothers us a lot about other people is so often what we see in ourselves? Nathan is just holding up a mirror to David. David's abuse of power. He says, David, you are that man. You're the guy in the story. You know, as we read a little bit further in the passage, there are two things I've never seen before. But listen to what it, what it says a little bit further in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 7 and 8. Then the Nathan said to David, you are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you all Israel and Judah. And if all this had been too little, I would have given you more. I would have given you more. There are two things that I've never seen. Here are the two things I've never seen in those verses. The first thing is, how painful this was to God to see what David did. Can you hear the pain in God's heart? David, was it not I who chose you? David, I saw you when you were alone with your guitar and your slingshot. I chose you. I anointed you. I'm the one that allowed you to rise to the place that you're at now I gave you the United Kingdom, and if that was not enough, David, I would have given you more. So you feel the pain in God's heart with the failure of David, but also you hear what God says. God says, I wanted to do so much more for you. And you think, what kind of things, what else could God do? Well, David always wanted to build a temple. He couldn't build a temple. And, and I, I'm sure that, 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 that there could have been a better legacy for David. There was fallout because of his sin. Here's the problem, folks. David handled adversity so well, but he didn't handle success very well. And what is true with David is also true for us. People seem to handle adversity better than they do success. And so here are the lessons. We had to give you a little bit of background and understanding. So here are the lessons that we can learn from this that can help us in our lives when things are going fairly well. What to do when things are actually going well in our life? Here's the first thing, the first lesson that we can learn. Keep your armor on even when you don't see a battle. That's the first lesson. Keep your armor on even when you don't see a battle. So what does it mean to take off your armor? Well, we can get very practical with that this morning. I would say it means in those easy times, it means compromising your faith, where I used to have really strong convictions. Maybe I compromised my faith. It means maybe I get a little bit lazy with, with my prayer life, with reading the Bible, uh, church attendance, I get a little bit lazy. Maybe I was really faithful, but as things are so good, I'm just kind of coasting along. It means maybe I become a little undisciplined. I was disciplined in my life, but I become a little bit undisciplined. It means maybe thinking that you've arrived. Pride, spiritual pride. I've kind of been around. I kind of know how things go spiritually. And so pride settles in. I've kind of arrived in my life. It means that you no longer guard your heart and your mind against the enemy. That's what it means to take your armor off. Listen to what it says about David. When kings normally go to war, David stayed behind in Jerusalem. Let's just kind of relax. Which means he took his armor off. David assumed God will give us success. I don't need to show up. I don't need to put my armor on. 
I don't need to do what I'm asking other people to do. It's like when the Apostle Paul warned Christians in Corinth, he said these words, he said, Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he falls. Whoa. It's exactly what David did. If the battle was obvious, you know, if there was a giant, if it was parental rejection, if it was opposition, David came dressed for battle, ready to fight. But when the enemy came dressed up as entitlement and lust, David wasn't ready. He didn't have his armor on. Why did the Apostle Peter warn the followers of Jesus? He said these words. Watch what he says. He says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Satan is an opportunistic vulture looking for someone who lets their guard down. Someone who is going through maybe a good time and is kind of beginning to coast and relax a little bit. Listen, folks, in Canada and the United States, we've seen a lot of grifted people, leaders, people in the church, trade in their armor for a sinful pot of stew. The Apostle Paul says, even on days when everything seems to be going well, he says, keep your armor on, stay alert. He says in Ephesians 6, therefore put on the full armor of God, so when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and you'll be ready. David thought you only wear your spiritual armor when you see a spiritual battle in front of you. That's why he says in the Psalms, listen to what he says. He says in Psalm chapter 86, he says, in the day of trouble, I will call upon the Lord. And I would add to that in the day of trouble. With no trouble, I won't. That's what's going on. David's spiritual health was, mar- was most at risk when he was comfortable. How many of you, things are going pretty well for you right now? Well, I mean, we, we always have challenges. We all have issues. But we go through times where actually things begin to go fairly well. You know this is an important time even in this time, how important it is to stay close to Jesus, to press into God, to be praying and in the word and in tune spiritually with the things of God. Amen? So there's the first lesson. In good times, when things are coasting, things are moving well, Keep your armor on. Even when you don't see a battle, keep your armor on. Stay alert. Stay spiritually in tune. How important it is for us to do that. What do you do when things are going well? Here's the second lesson that's very important that we learn. Second lesson is give credit to God for your successes. Always give credit to God for your successes. God says to David, listen to what he says. This is God speaking. He says, I anointed you. I saved you. I gave you everything you have. I gave it to you. David, the successes that you have experienced throughout your life have come from my hand. Folks, how many know it's dangerous for you and me? when we start congratulating ourselves on how wonderful we are, right? Look at what I've done. Look at what I've arrived. Look at the money. Look at the job. Look at at this. Look at all the things I have. Look at what I own. It's a dangerous day when we don't give credit where credit is due. Amen? Because how many know all that we have and ever hope to be, we owe it all to who? We owe it all to thee. We owe it all to Jesus. Listen to what James says. James says these words, whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father. Every perfect gift, everything we have has has come from the hand of the Lord. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. That's an important lesson that sometimes people have to learn the hard way. It's easier to learn the easy way. God, thank you for all that I have. Second lesson, what do you do when things are going good? Well, thank Jesus for all that he's given you. Amen? 
Here's the third lesson. When things are go, yeah, going well, folks, get ready for God to do more. That's the third lesson. Get ready for God to do more. David, I wanted to do so much more for you. Remember that? And so I, w- I thought, I asked myself the question, why didn't God do more? I would say God didn't do more because David got in the way of the more that God wanted to do. David got in the way. Listen, there's an application for every one of us here this morning. And hear me very closely on this. You and I can miss the more because of the way we handle the already has. God wanted to do more. But David wasn't in a place spiritually where he could handle more. His armor was off. He wasn't recognizing that everything he had had come from God. I believe we need to position ourselves for the more that God wants to do, not only through you as a person, but through us as a church. I think when things are going well in your life, maybe you've reached your goals, attained some sort of success, you're feeling kind of good, I think we become a little bit vulnerable. It's easy to let down your guard, to relax, to coast. We can do that as people, but we can also do that as a church. We can do that as a church. I just think about where we're at as a church. We worked hard at setting vision, at raising the funds, bringing in a new intergenerational pastor. Now we can just coast along and let him do all the work, right? There's a dangerous thing. That's a dangerous thing, and there's a, a dangerous time that we can walk into and, 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 and not realize that God has brought us this far this far, and we need to realize that he has so much more, right? And that Clinton can't do it all himself. We need to work together. God has so much more. And so we need to keep your armor on even when you don't see a battle. You need to give God credit for everything that you have, and we need to get ready for God wants to do so much more. Here's a quote to think about. Here it is. You ready for it? It says, we need to turn our arrival points, we've come to a certain place, into a launching pad into the future. We've come to a certain place of the church, but that's just the launching pad for where God wants to take us. Turn your successes into more success. Listen this morning, in your successes, God always wants to do more. He always wants to do more. And, and you can interpret that physically or whatever. I really think you know, there's lots of things that God wants to do in your life. But I, I'm speaking spiritually this morning. Listen to what he says to the prophet I, I, um, Jeremiah. He says, watch this. He says, call to me, and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not even know. Get along with God, and you're talking to God, you're calling on God, and God begins to speak into your life about your future and what he wants for you and where he's leading you. And even as a church, he begins to speak to us. It's things that we maybe haven't even thought about. There's so much more that he wants for us. Ephesians says this, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power, That is at work within us. He wants to do so much more. How important it is for us not to get in the way. And so, folks, as we we kind of wrap up this message this morning, some people are facing issues right now, and you're, you're pressing into God. Some of you, maybe things are going fairly well. I would say still stay close to Jesus. Press into him. I encourage you to put your armor on even when you don't see the battle. I'm so excited about this prayer meeting throughout the week, and I know that prayer goes on more than the church, but obviously we need to have organized times for you to come. And I'm so excited because really, you know, as as a church, we're not really facing a lot of battles right now, and I'm not asking for battles, and I'm not praying for battles But I'm so thankful that there are people gathered even when there is no battle calling on God, right? 
That's important. And even pre-service prayer, calling on God, waiting on God. Keep your armor on, even when you don't see a battle. Humble yourself and give God praise for the good that he, that he has given you and realize that God has so much more. God has so much more for your life. It doesn't matter your age or where you're at, what you've attained. God has so much more for my life. And we need to, don't get in the way. <laughs> I don't want to get in the way. God, whatever you have for me, God, I want you to show me and direct me. Uh, I want the more that you have for me. And I know that's your cry. And, and I say as a church, folks, God has so much more for us as a church. Thank God for where he has brought us at this point in many ways. A lot of work, a lot of prayer. But God has so much more. For us as a church in reaching people and reaching this community and building ministries God has so much more oh let's not get in the way amen let's stay on our knees seeking the face of God say God lead us and direct us in the more amen how many excited about the future I'm excited you know the world it's a scary world. <laughs> but you know what? The darker the world becomes, the, light, the, the brighter the light of the gospel becomes. And the church in the midst of, I mean, of all days, the church needs to rise up today in the midst of this brokenness and be the church and do what we're called to do with the help of the Lord. I believe God is going to lead us into that. Amen? So, Lord, there's the lesson that some of us have learned. Um, some of us maybe will learn. Um, it'd be good if this morning, Lord, we could take these lessons and we could drive them down into our hearts, Lord. Maybe things are going fairly well right now. Oh, God, I pray we'd stay on our knees. I pray we'd stay alert. I pray that we would keep our armor on and always be on our guard because the enemy would love to tear down and destroy people. That we would always realize that everything that I have, everything, Lord, everything I own, all my gifts, all the blessings that I have, they've all come from the hand of God. And, and I just give you praise for all that you've given us, Lord Jesus. Help us to remember the lesson that, God, you always want to do more. There's no arrival points until we are in heaven. There's always things that you have for us, uh, directions and just future things, Lord. Even in our own personal lives, you want to do so much more. And so, Lord, I pray that faith would rise in our hearts, anticipation to say, God, I want you to do the more. I want the more. I don't want to limit God, what you want to do in and through my life. I don't want to limit what you want to do in and through this church. Help us in these areas to learn these lessons, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Stand with us this morning. Worship the Lord. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Again, I bless your name. You are my all in 
like prayer this morning or you just want to come and stand and worship the Lord, we open the altars for you. Pastor Marilyn's here. We have some board members that are here this morning. If you'd like prayer, I want to give you an opportunity to come and respond. Take some time to worship the Lord. Allow the Lord to speak into our hearts. So as we, Pastor Clinton leads us, invite you to come. We'll pray for you. Encourage you this morning. Amen. Amen. Pastor Clinton can lead us. Amen. Jesus, oh Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. My strength, you are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. In seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up by the a fool. You are my all in all. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. And when I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all.
worship you. He is holy. Oh, holy. You are holy. King of kings, Lord of lords, you
You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all you deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. thankful for your presence here today from the very first song we just just sensed your presence we know you're with us at all times but lord it's good to get together and worship thank you for being so faithful this morning in this service ministering to our hearts and our lives and worship thank you for these lessons that you've reminded of us of today i pray that as we leave this place that we would remember these lessons Lord, very important things in our life that we'd be able to go on and not get in the way of what God wants to do because you have so much more for us. Thank you for that. Bless us today. Bless us as we leave this place in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and have a great day. Great seeing you.